the cemetery, now everything looks good. What's this? Best of the Doris. Oh, so good looking. He is so good looking. Oh, oh! <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm so glad you could make it. It just stopped raining, so now it's time to go outside. Just like Mama said, time to play outside. I didn't want to get my camera wet, that's why I've been in here just looking at Jim Morrison. But now everything's okay? So we're ready to rock. Oh, that's disrespectful to do that in a cemetery. Wake up the dead. No, whoa, 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 enough. I got you, I got you. Wow, those are real flowers too. No, they're fake, they're fake. Why did I say that? Oh yeah, you see? All right, no, it's, it's still raining and I don't want to get my camera all wet. But that's okay, we'll stay in here. We'll stay in here, I'm very antisocial. There are too many people outside right now. The fudge, dude, what the heck? You see that? That just fell, screw that, dude. I'm... Yeah, maybe it's good I'm staying in here. That just happened, yo. What a wonderful idea, standing right under it, too. Uh, at least my tombstone wouldn't be too far off. In fact, this could be an empty plot right here. <laughs> oh, ooh, we got a live, living person. Living person, no way. Excellent, I'm not alone in this world, then. All right, yes, let's, so let's stay inside then. Okay, okay, let's stay inside. Any trees above us? No, I don't park under trees like that. Oh, jeez, dude, that would stink. That would really stink because this car is... Pff, yeah, right, dude, I've been dodging crappy drivers for years. There's no way this car is going to get a dent in it from a, a falling tree branch. Ugh, that would stink. <laughs> I don't care about my safety. I just care about this car. <laughs> yes, okay, we're good. Um, so I just wanted to share with you all some quotes that I found very helpful over the years, getting through a lot of things in life. Oh, shoot, I see a walker. Oh, good, the person has a dog with them. Good. Okay, everything's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share with you some quotes that I found very helpful over the years dealing with fear. Um, some people say that, oh, you have no fear, blah, blah, blah. I actually have a ton of fear. Naturally, I'm, I, I have a lot of fear. Um, but I just try not to show it, and um, I've I found it. Uh, I found a way to make it feel less bottomless. <laughs> All right, stop that. I'm a fan of Dexter Noah, by the way. You guys got me into it. All of your comments. Fear is a good motivator. I think some people think fear is totally bad. Not necessarily. Fear will keep you alive. Fear will keep you on your toes. Fear will keep you busy. And that's all a good thing, because if you weren't, oh boy, oh boy, you are a mess. Oh, this feels kind of good. You, know? you guys like my Ninja Turtle water bottle? <laughs> Who's this one? Anyone? Anyone? Donatello, very good. I like it when you can't see what I have in here. So is it water? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Water. The most important thing in life. So these quotes have helped me. I have them here at my laptop on my side. They mostly have to do with fear, um, but also individuality and a few things that go along with them. A few of them are pretty generic, and that is, I don't really know who said them, and some of it is disputed. Winston Churchill is credited to saying this, but um, I looked it up a little bit more, and apparently he didn't say it. That happens all the time. Oh, oh, before, before darn, I'm getting so distracted. Um, I read this hilarious quote online. It was, uh... Uh, it w oh cool, look at the blue jay on top of the tombstone, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, let me film that real quick. Instagram picture. Don't fudge, it never came through. Flew away. I struggle with anger too. No, I do not. Winston Churchill, anyway, um, uh, he said, said, if you're going through hell, keep going. And I love that quote. Um, because I'm so, this is, oh, this video is going to be a mess. Um, but, he, but uh, he's credited to saying that, but apparently he never said it. There goes a blue jay. You know what I like about blue jays is... Focus, don't focus on the raindrips! Come on, truck and fudge. Come on, focus! Oh, wow. Beautiful, look at those colors. Wow. Oh, hi, little blue... What I like about blue jays? is they're mean to other birds. They're very mean. Oh yeah. Other birds mess with the blue jay. The bird for you better watch out, Mr. Blue Jay will come by and eat you up. 
Look at those colors. Oh my goodness, girl. All right, okay, okay. Let's try it again. Winston Churchill was credited to saying, if you're going through hell, keep going. Um, but apparently he never said that upon further research, and that's what I've learned. Um, but in any case, it doesn't matter who who has said these these quotes. Um, that this what, is, what I really like about that quote: "If you're going through hell, keep going," is it signifies that it's a temporary thing. It gives hope and strength to people going through whatever they're going through. Um, so I really, really cherish that quote. Also, Zen Shin, who is an author, in one of her books, she said. A flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. Even if it's a fake flower. No, thank you, can't do that. I really like that quote because it shows that you shouldn't care about what other people are doing, what other people are looking like. You should just do your own thing. I mean, there's a lot of competition in the world and everything. If, I mean, it, it could be as vain as looks. It could be, um, it could be profession. It could be how well you sing, how, how well you, um, uh, it could be anything, you know, so there's combat, life is, is, is seen as a competition, and, uh, it could be from a Darwinian standpoint, <laughs> competition is everything in life, but, um, don't pay attention to what other people are doing, just do your own thing, and show it and be proud of it and just like the flower that blooms you know occasionally the flower will get visits by bees and the flower may be jealous that more bees are visiting a neighboring flower but um it just it doesn't care about all the stuff around it it just lives right it just lives until it's eaten by something right <laughs> all right I, I'll, I, I'll try not to do that i'll try not to to make bad endings for this video because this is supposed to be a happy motivational video but uh, I just want to throw in a little bit of realism though, you know, I mean dang some dog comes along and you know wants to eat some pollen Goodbye <laughs> Another one I like Generic one that I hear a lot never let your fear decide your future Um, and I, I think a lot of uh, I can see this a lot in people especially people that are old enough to where you can see where Where their life has been and, and what what they wanted to make of their life um, and and maybe their their lack of motivation to change whatever it is about their life that, that they didn't want, that they now think they, they're stuck with. Whether a, a partner, a profession, um, or whatever. Um, never let fear decide your future, to me, um, means don't let your fears get in the way of doing what you want to do and who you want to become. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people say, be yourself, but if you want to become a better self, strive for that. And just don't let your fears override you. Fight your fears and fight whatever it is. It's putting, putting, pulling you back. And uh, don't make fun of my Michigan accent, by the way. Back. Apple. For a lot of people, fear dictates their lives. The most comforting feeling ever is, is doing something that completely freaks you out and scares you so much. Um, but just at the end of it, at the end of the day, sleeping well, knowing that, that you did it, and even if you fail. <laughs> well, because that's a big part, right? You miss 100% of the shots you do not take. I like that quote too. I don't know who said that. But I remember it. These things, you know, you just keep them in your head. Everyone has these motivational quotes in their head. Um, even subconsciously, even. You know, they just think of things. What I like about, about language is it, it conveys a lot. It's like art. You, I mean, you can read something and it can be so small, such a short text. It can say hardly anything, but with, with saying everything. You know what I mean? That's that's what I like about that. It's so nice. It's so I love reading stuff like that. I I can read all day about that. Another quote I like, because it really it really puts things into perspective, is always remember that you are unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> everyone is unique in their own ways. That's so cliche, but it's so true. Um, there really isn't a normal. It's all relative speaking too, though. You know, I mean, I'm normal. I wear shoes. If opportunity doesn't knock, build the door. Milton Berle said that. He was an actor. And to me, that means that, hey, if, if, the, if the world in which we live in has no opportunities for you, um, create them. Like, do your own thing. You know, have the confidence to, to go out there and create something, do something differently. Um, I mean, you can do it. You know, anyone can do that. You really shouldn't take along the success of others. And if there are no opportunities for you as it is, do your own thing, create your own thing. 
Um, I really, I really do like that quote um, because it, it really, it really points towards self responsibility and self confidence to do your own thing and not rely on other people for the opportunities that they may give. Just give yourself an opportunity. Just do it. Do something new. But legal, but legal, legal, that's, that's the big part. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Many of you know that one. FDR said that. It's oftentimes not what we fear that freaks us out. It's just simply because we're afraid of it. I don't know. It's so hard to explain. Um, but it's so it's so true. I mean, the, the fear of fear is it's kind of trippy to think about. But, I mean, we're, we're afraid to do things um, just because we're afraid to to do it we don't not necessarily I mean once we do it we feel so good and it's not it's not that we uh, we're afraid of doing it it's just that we have this work we tell our minds that we are and like I said earlier it's just going to going to sleep at night knowing that you did something that you were so afraid of and accomplished it and it, it makes you feel so good it's so euphoric arguably uh, fear is what caused the Great Depression oh no the banks are running out of money we have to get our money out of our savings account um, and then people were going on bank runs and as soon as you know it the bank was like crap everyone is withdrawing at the same time we don't have enough money to give to these to these people um, they they had way more money in on on paper than they did on, in cash and, and gold and silver and FDR took out the gold standard oh oh I hate him for it my, my favorite president though is is probably John F Kennedy um, because he was so different than the other American presidents, and he he uh, he had so much confidence with his executive orders. Um, he he tried taking out the Federal Reserve, uh, tried to get rid of that bank executive order one 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 zero, and um, uh, he was shot not too long after that. Oh, shoot! I, now we're getting into conspiracy theory stuff. Um, I would not honestly, I would not be surprised if he was taken out by someone other than Lee Harvey Oswald. All right, this is how cool JFK is. This is why I like him, because of what he said. I can relate to him so much. He says, forgive your enemies, but never forget their names. Don't forget, never forget what people do to you. Never. Um, and forgive people if they're truly sincere. I mean, I hate it when people say, oh, I forgive you. When they don't say they're sorry, or, or, or if you're from Canada, you would say, uh, sorry. Um, if, if, if they're not sorry, or... If they're not apologetic in any way, then what's the point of forgiving people? But for JFK's quote, it's uh, don't trust people. Um, so I mean, that's that's cool. Don't forget their names. Don't forget what people do to you ever. Um, as much as you want to forget, as much as you would like to believe that they're truly sincere and apologetic, never forget what they did to you. JFK, a man may die, nations may rise and fall. But an idea lives on. It's so true. People come and go. Countries, civilizations from a from a world perspective. The Roman Empire, you know, Samaria, <laughs> ancient Egypt, the Ottomans, the Akkadians, the Babylonians, blah 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 blah. Civilizations come and go, cultures come and go. <laughs> it's hard to say that because we don't we don't live long enough to see them come and go. But looking in world history they do. Countries fade away, <laughs> so, except for the United States. The United States will be around forever. And same thing with the Soviet Union. No, oh, the Soviet Union. Yeah, that went well, and then it, and then it kind of failed. And then, Mr. Gorbachev. Ideas live on. It's a lot of times, it's when people fight for something. Sometimes they fail, but it's their attempts are never forgotten. The idea of what they wanted, and that especially relates to freedom, the freedom to fight for what you believe in. Even if you fail, the idea of, and that reminds me of a movie, Valkyrie. Um, um, Klaus von Stauffenberg tried overtaking his own, his own government. The, he was a Nazi. But he tried, he tried overtaking Hitler's regime in the SS. Um, he, tried, he tried assassinating Hitler. Uh, which, you know, I don't know. That's, is it morally right to do that? I guess, yeah. Yeah, it is. Would you kill Hitler if he was a baby? Like in 1890, or, or yeah, that's probably about right. Um, no, no, oh, it's so hard. I don't know. That's that's a different question for another topic for another day. Because he didn't do anything yet, and I mean, a lot of people would say they would, but could they actually do it? No way. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't kill. It. No way. 
Mmm. Mmm. Oh, and that would change the course of history. I have no idea, guys. That's way too hard. But anyway, ideas live on. Um, except if it's like... <laughs> it, it, no, it depends on the idea. If someone is saying that the world is flat, you know, and if they've been saying that for hundreds and hundreds of years, the, I mean, that idea should be dead by, the, by now, but it's not. It's still, it's still living in some people's minds. Oh, jeez. So, I guess JFK... No, J... Oh, okay, some of these... Oh, so, a lot of these quotes are subjective, I guess, if you really think about it. <laughs> but JFK also said... Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. And that's that's so true. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Those that, that go with the flow, they're not really learning anything new from themselves. Those that are stuck their old ways, they're not really growing at all. And they don't push themselves. Um, and when, they, when they try to be like the, the everyone else, the, the pack, they can perform well in society, sure. Um, but as far as a growth standpoint, um, if you're not pushing yourself, if you're not doing things a little differently than other people, then are you really growing? You could be, but uh, would you would you feel freedom? I don't think so. I don't know because freedom to me means means doing your own thing and not caring what other people think. Abraham Lincoln, the internet is not a reliable source to find quotes from famous people. No, 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 he did not say that. He, he, uh, at least I don't think he, uh, he could have. Um, but he, did, he was recorded saying, Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. If you deprive the rights of someone, you don't deserve the rights yourself. I totally agree. This is, goes along with uh, uh, hypocriticalness. That's not a word. Hypocrite. Hypocriticalness. Hip hypocrisy. Duh, idiot. Shoot. Like, I've been in this country for 25 years, and I still don't know the English very well. <sighs> a lot of times you see people wanting to uh, demean people or oppress people, and you've, you've seen this against women, you've seen this against gays, for instance, more recently. It's more like treat people the way you would like to be treated sort of thing. You know, like, what's the, what's the point if you're depriving someone of, of their freedom and you have the same freedom? And look, I don't care what people think either. If people, if that's a controversial for me to say, it's so stupid. It's so I mean, come on, people, to think about other people for a change. In history, you you can see people being oppressed. You you've seen this with Jews, you've seen this with with women. As far as they, I mean, even a hundred years ago in the United States, women women could not vote. I really, really do like the appearance of Jim Morrison. I do, I do. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Right. Look at those nipples. I really do like this guy. I think he's good looking, right? But doing things to him that some other men who who um, call themselves homosexuals would do to him, you know, I am, I that's that's sick to me, right? But if someone wants to do that, as long as they're consenting adults, then I don't care what they do. You know, that's their private lives anyway. That's their private life. Like, why is sexual preference so like? Why is it such a big deal? I mean, I get it. If, if, if someone's interested in kids, that is terrible. Those people should be... I mean, if they're adults, I don't, I don't understand the big deal. And I know so many people who agree with me, who are religious, who, who dare not say anything. And that's, I know so many religious people who, who agree with me and are open about that. But it's, the way I see it, as long as they're consenting adults, as long as they're capable of understanding what's going on, like, I think that pff, that's great. If someone wants to do things to Jim Morrison that I would not do, personally, I'm not a fan of, uh, what is it, necrophilia, then <laughs> that, that, is, that is so inappropriate. We are at a cemetery. I'll stop talking about that. But, but look, look, that's totally fine. They can do whatever they want. And it's none of my business. It shouldn't be anyone's business, and especially the government's business. I mean, look, like sexual preference, what someone is willing to do in the bedroom, why is it such a big deal? Why is, like, so what? He likes men. He likes men, big deal. Or she likes chicks. You know, that's totally cool, too. You know, I also like petting them. I mean, they're so yellow and small and fuzzy. And every time at a farm or a petting zoo, you know, they're just adorable. Um, all right, enough, enough, okay. This comes from Audrey Hepburn. She was a famous, famous actress. I can't say famous. She said, For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness. And for poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. 
I like this one. I love it when beauty is used in a sense that doesn't have to d deal with physical appearance because I've, you know, I'm straight and I've met some women that were really, really, really physically good looking, but, oh geez, but, you know, I, no, um, but we're mean, cold as ice and just mean to everyone else. Like, I was asked out by this chick once in college, um, and I totally lied to her face, and I said, like, I'm not interested, like, I'm seeing someone, and which was a complete lie, I was totally single. <gasps> but she was mean, she wasn't mean to me at all, but she was mean to everyone else. I thought, dude, like, no, 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 no. So if you're watching this, oh, if you're watching this, um, I hope you're not watching this. <laughs> no. Being nice comes a long ways. Like I said, I know, I knew some people that were really good looking, that were in my mind beautiful um, and, until talking with them or getting to know them and they turned out to be the ugliest people ever and sometimes when I see people who are not so much blessed in the physical appearance department um, getting to know them um, getting talking with them is just they are the most beautiful people ever and there can be it can be you know two ways it can be both traits it can be having being being uh, um, physically ugly and then f uh, also um, mentally ugly too. I hate saying mentally ugly because just you know like and I hate saying saying oh he has a bad personality because or she has a bad personality. Did I say I was gay? I did not say that. I am not gay. It doesn't matter if I was. Who cares? None of your business. Jeez. Um, sorry I'm offended by that. <sighs> so like I've met women that were really like a 10 and who like, like once I know that they're a mean person, they went from being like a 10 to like a 2. Even though they had still had that, the physical component there, you become immune to that. Beauty is nothing. Be physical beauty is absolutely nothing um, compared to spiritual. Um, so as far as how nice the person is and how, I mean, just some people are so incredible. And some people are just uh, twats. Is that a swear word? I shouldn't say that. No, it's not a swear word. Mm. Um, but for beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. Um, I struggle with this because I am predisposed to favor a certain eye color, and it's nothing I can help. It's because I've done some research on this, and it's just evolution, and it's... I mean, I like people of all eye colors, but... Um, I don't know, let's uh, try to talk about that. For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. Look at people, look through them, see through them, judge them. We judge people every day and don't think about it. It's totally true, and you're judged every day without knowing too. That's what people do, and that's the truth. Walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. A lot of times people have trouble relating to people because they simply can't find another person with the same life experiences or interests but if it's really wacky I'm sure there's someone else who probably lives close to you who believes the same thing but if you never talk about it you'll never meet such a person and like you wouldn't believe you wouldn't believe all the people that, that struggle with certain issues and Audrey Hepburn too I have another quote by her I'm an introvert I love being by myself love being outdoors Love taking a long walk with my dogs and looking at the trees, the flowers, the sky. Uh, so walk with the knowledge that you are never alone, Audrey Hepburn, and also how introverted she is. Um, but you are. You can, you can knowledge that you are never alone. It could apply to other people. It could it could apply to yourself too. Some people that I know, very few people, when they have difficulty finding friends, they become their own friend. It's an illusion. But it helps them. It's something to, to, uh, it's comforting to them. They have like two, they're like two people in one. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, but, um, you know, just be by yourself and relate to yourself and be nice to yourself. I beat myself up so, so, so much to the word, to the point of bruises, you know, and deep within the flesh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's 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 good to be critical of yourself. But um be your be I don't know, it's hard because I'm 
I'm a good friend of myself, but I'm the worst enemy of myself. I am totally, I'm probably a better enemy than a friend to myself. I don't know. This is getting so mental. All right. But it's good. I think it's good. It's good. It's kind of like a love-hate relationship with yourself. And I think, I mean, that sounds really crazy. It sounds so bizarre, right? It sounds, it sounds kind of psychotic. But really, everyone can relate to that. Everyone, you just may not want to say that on camera. <laughs> but I don't care, dude. I don't care at all. Like, everyone, everyone already knows that I sleep with a teddy bear at night. So you think I'm going to tell people that I don't, like, talk to myself? I talk to myself all the time. In fact, I'm talking to myself right now in front of the camera, but eventually I think a couple of people will see it. So, you know, big deal. I sleep with a teddy bear at night, big deal. I'm so self-conscious about that. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was expecting when I uploaded that video, like that me saying I sleep with a teddy bear, I was expecting everyone to say, dude, you're a creep, blah, blah, blah. But like, no one was said anything about it. Like, no one said that was really weird. And then I looked it up, and I thought, like, mo I found out most people sleep with, like, a teddy bear at night or, like, something else at night. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's why. And people, you people are giving me crap for eating dog food. Like, don't judge a man by what he eats, okay? No, no there, there are a few exceptions to that, though, like, um, like, my boy Jeffrey. <laughs> Audrey Hepburn, my girl. I have a crush on her. I have a celebrity crush. I only have a, a few crushes on people, but but they're like all dead. The people that I have a crushes on, that I fancy, they're all dead. So I mean, that's kind of pointless. But I mean, I don't know. Except for Blake Lively, I have a celebrity crush on her, just because uh, of her eye color. All right. Um, Audrey Hepburn said, "Nothing is impossible. The world itself says I'm possible." The word. Darn it! I can't read. I can't read. Nothing is impossible. The, the word itself says I'm possible. Yes, that's true. If you look at impossible, I'm possible. Although there is a lack of the capital I and there is a lack of an apostrophe. So, I mean, that's kind of true, but it's more like, and there's, of course, the space. So, like, technically, it's like, that's not, like, true at all. I mean, <laughs> if you look at words, there's a lot of words within words. Like, together, to get her. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't go, go off serial killer me. But you know, some things are impossible. If you want to get really technical, because I, I have a habit of thinking really, really technically, um, uh, some things are totally impossible, like running a mile in under two minutes. No, I guess that could be possible. If you had some something to like amplify your legs, at least in the future, back in the day, going to the moon, probably like, that was impossible. And then when, when, uh, when Copernicus said, uh, guys, guys, I've done some studying and I think, actually, I think that, I, I think that the sun is staying still and the earth goes around it. And everyone's like, no, dude, that's impossible. Copernicus was like, uh, dudes, like, like, this is right. Like, I've done, he got kicked out from the church because of that, because science was derived from the church and that went obey the God's teachings in the church. Copernicus was shunned from the church for saying that. And he's like, dudes, like, what the heck? Like, the earth is the, is the, the thing moving. The sun is standing still. The earth is moving around it. It's not the other way around. It's not the sun going around the earth. Oh, was that controversial, Copernicus? You a bad boy? But he was correct. He was true. But some things can be impossible, like um, you guys being able to see the blind guy video. I don't think that's going to happen. There's no way, dude. There's no way that's going to happen. Kurt Cobain. All right, disclaimer here. I'm going to mention someone that's very controversial from a source of a quote. Or at least I always thought it was stupid. Um, and uh, I, I hate the quote. I hate the quote. It's better. It's better to 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 burn out than fade away, by Kurt Cobain. Because it's like, dude, he he did something that is so reprehensible, and I don't like. I really don't like Kurt Cobain quotes. I really don't. Just be, if they're if they're talking about if they're ta if they're like anti depression or whatever. It's like, dude, like the guy the guy killed himself. It's like, it's not necessarily the quotes, it's just knowing that they came from Kurt Cobain and how he ended up, you know, but there are a few quotes that, that I do like of him um, because he seemed very sincere, but I didn't know him personally, so I can't say that for certain. I didn't, I, like, that's a disclaimer, like, I don't know who these people really are, I just know what, what they were uh, recorded as, as saying. Kurt Cobain, I love this one. I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I am not. 
I totally, totally love that quote. That's one of my favorite ones. It's better to be hated and be yourself. And right in front of me there is a lady walking a dog, and it's going to be weird because she's going to see me in the cemetery talking to myself, and the dog's looking at me kind of funny too. Oh, and that's actually a guy. I keep on doing this. Oh, look at the dog. Hi. Um, nice dog. See, I love dogs. I love dogs because they're always so happy. I mean, this dog is walking the cemetery. Like, strange dogs. Like, dogs you aren't familiar with. They're always so happy. Like, look at that tail wag, right? They're always so happy. I mean, you never see, like, a str I mean, very rarely do you see strangers go up to you tail wagging, so to speak, all, like, happy. Like, hey, how you doing? But dogs are cool, though. Dogs are so much better than people, I think, because they're just, they're, they're domesticated. Hey, here's an interesting idea. So dogs are so friendly because they were domesticated by humans many, many, many years ago. Now, for the most part, a very domesticated, a very uh, social dog will go up to people and be very happy, you know, smiling, licking, tail wagging. You don't really experience that with people. Um, <laughs> do you think in the future humans will be, I hate saying domesticated, but I'm going to say it, because this sounds like we're animals, which we are, we're mammals, you know, we're nothing but mammals. Uh, stop that. Um, do you think in the future humans will be a little bit more domesticated? To where, to where we, we become more civil, civilized? That'd be cool. Wouldn't that be weird? Wow. How would you undergo such a task? Such a feat? You would have to like, oh, mm. that would not be good. That's so messed up. That's so messed up, like having people like cattle and raising them and breeding them however you want to. That's, we're getting on the line of eugenics now and uh, ethnical stuff. That's not cool stuff. But I totally agree with that. I'd rather, I'd so much rather be hated uh, for, for who I am than loved for who I am not. Because I know, because <laughs> I know some people that, that just live for acceptance. They want to be accepted in anything they do, everything they say and, and whoever they want to be with. They just want acceptance. They're not true to themselves, and they may appear happy on the outside, but inside, it's a struggle for them. And uh, it's, I'm not saying that I don't struggle, of course not. I try to be myself, but sometimes I'm not myself. Sometimes, some, sometimes I uh, pretend. Like if I'm, just, just for the sake of convenience, like if I'm talking to someone, I, can make, I could make so many enemies just by saying what's on my mind and when like, talking to strangers and stuff. I think Marilyn Manson said, uh, something like, um, I would judge success not by those that love you, but by those that hate you too. Because wouldn't that stink to be loved by everyone? There'd be no real individuality. It'd be almost like, if you're loved, because people, people are so different, if you're loved by everyone, then I think you're not doing something right. I think you're not being true to yourself. I think you're fake. Um, because people are so different, and what, what one person may love, another person would hate. Um, and so I just, and also I, I think you want to be decisive in letting people know your true feelings. And and, um, and I don't think you would be real with people and that is not an attractive trait at all. People that go with the flow like that and just like, and they're just private and to them to themselves and don't express if something, if someone is doing something to them that they don't like, people that just take it in. Like dude, express yourself, say what you like, say what you don't like. And who cares what people think, you know, I mean, I mean, who cares? I mean, I've done some things that some people think is so bad. This, this whole predator thing, uh, I've, I've had a very few people say that, like, dude, you are the biggest scumbag I have ever seen. Even some friends, um, <laughs> some, but and some of them are still friends, um, just because they have a different viewpoint than me. Um, but most of them are just jerks, so like, and they're older people too, they're very, very much older than me. Um, but it's like, like, dude, I don't care, and so I'm, I'm hated, like, as a person, I'm hate, I'm not hated by some people like that. Um, but they hate some of my views, but I don't care, they can, they can go walk off a cliff or something like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> maybe they're not, no, maybe they're not friends. Kurt Cobain also said, Wanting to be someone else is a waste of the person you are. It's totally true. <laughs> don't be someone else. Please don't be someone else. Um, we don't need more of the same person. We need more of uh, individuals. Totally, totally, totally agree with that. Kurt Cobain also said, The worst crime is faking it. And I think a lot of YouTubers should take note of that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. 
I'm not naming any in particular because I don't get in that drama crap because like back in the day in YouTube everyone did their own thing. I've been a very early member um, ever since it came out, you know, as a lurker and then registered in 2006, pick up six. Everyone did their own thing. They didn't really like, they didn't really smack on each other. No, it's like, it's like what the heck, it's like a circus. I love it when people are real. Like, more people need to be real. It's just a lot of people are afraid to. And including me. I try to be real. I do. I try to be real. But there are some things I'm just not comfortable sharing. <laughs> but no. What? 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 Jim Morrison, my boy. My boy Jim. My boy Jim right here. Where is your will to be weird? Will. Where is your will to be weird? He had a very high IQ. Um, and what he would do is, I, read, I heard a story from his sister that he faked a brain tumor in class just to get out of class so he could, he, so, so, I can't talk. So he could go to the library and read. He said, excuse me, I have to go get a brain tumor removed. The teacher said, oh, what? Oh, okay. And then he left and then he went to the library to read. He read a lot. I respect that. Uh, and also in, in Spanish class, he wrote, he wrote really weird stuff like, um, for, for sentences to be translated from Spanish to English. He wrote sentences in Spanish that said like, like everyone eats small dogs. It's just messed up. <laughs> the weird guy. Most everyone is weird, but it's so weird because in our society today, it's it's not really attractive to be weird. It's not because people don't embrace it as much. But I think in the future people will. I think in the future people will be so alike that they'll want to be different, and then it'll be cool. You know, it'll be cool to say that you like eating dog food. I I don't. I mean I. It's not bad. Also, Jim Morrison, whoever controls the media controls the mind. Totally true. Um, for the most part, people believe what they hear. I have experience in this, <laughs> deep experience with that. For the most part, people believe what they hear. Um, and uh, just do your own research. Don't take the media's word for certain things. It's like the media is no smarter than you are. Don't take their word. Like what? Like the media isn't a god or anything like that. The media is just a group of people no smarter than you. I really like this one from Jim Morrison as well. Expose yourself to your deepest fear. After that, fear has no power, and the fear of freedom shrinks and vanishes. You are free. Your deepest fear, what is your deepest fear? Tackle it, destroy it. Destroy it and you'll become more comfortable in doing whatever activity or whatever thought or whatever it is that's bothering you. There are some fears I've had that I've had for so long that I can you know, comfortably do from a physical standpoint. You know, a big deal. I may be afraid of uh, chipmunks, but you know, <laughs> no. From a physical standpoint, you know, fear is like big deal. The mental fears are the worst. The, the, the fears of what if, or what if I didn't do enough, or I mean, those are the worst ones. Um, those are totally the worst ones. Um, but, but as with anything, tackle it, and uh, you'll, live, you'll live in freedom, just like what Jim Morrison implied. I mean, fear has power. Fear has a tremendous amount of power. Fear prevents you from doing things that you've always wanted to do, that you don't do, that you never think you will do. Um, but, but once you do it, once you just tackle it, destroy it, uh, your life is, uh, it becomes, uh, it, feels, it feels like you're so much free. They have so much weight off your shoulders. And um, it's a difficult discipline too. But it's just a matter of not thinking, not thinking about it and just doing it. And then you learn from that to, to kind of censor off that little voice in your head that tells you not to do it, to not think it's something. To prove that little voice wrong, it's a war within yourself. It totally is. Man versus self is the greatest conflict above all, I believe. Man versus man, big deal. Man versus nature, big deal. We have air conditioning. Man versus uh, society, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one too. Okay, this, this, it depends. Alright, this is my favorite Jim Morrison quote right here. I love this one a lot. Uh, it goes like this. Friends can help each other. A true friend is someone who lets you have total freedom to be yourself and especially to feel or not to feel. Whatever you happen to be feeling at the moment is fine with them. That's what real love amounts to. Letting the person be who he or she really is. I love that quote. Oh, Jim, my boy, music to my ears. Oh yeah, no, I didn't mean that pun. It's such a, such a hunk. Look at that guy. So sad he died. I love that one. Friends, the, the people, guys, I'm fake around people I don't really know very well. 
um, uh, probably, but people that I know and love, I'm so real around them. But it really depends because I may love, it depends on how much I love them or, or, or like what the level of love is. If it's like family, someone that I've been like recently, you know, I won't say things. Or, and then, but if it's this, if it's someone else, then I'll I'll be completely free. Um, but every so everyone has everyone has those barriers, and I don't think it's bad to have that. It's it's just as long as you're true to to a certain few, a select few. I think that's a very healthy to get it all out there. But I'm not gonna tell I'm not gonna tell my mom, for instance, that I uh, that I also have a crush on Patrick Swayze or anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? What it feels so good, and it's it, being around people that you can that you can say anything with, or, or tell exactly what's on your mind, even if it's friends inside your head. You know that is the most comforting thing ever, because for the most part, people can relate. Everyone can relate, and it just feels so nice. You know, it feels so heartwarming um, to talk to people that actually understand you, and uh, especially if they had similar experiences or were in a certain or were, or were in a similar situation. Just relating to people is, is how to cope with so many things. And I love that. I love that. I love dealing with people. I'm actually a people person, but a very, a very select few. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? I don't like it when I'm around people and I feel like they have this facade. It's like and when I try to talk real to people, it's like, dude, I know you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Just be real with me. You know? It bothers me. I love being around people I'm comfortable with. You can say anything to. It's so, it feels so free. It feels, it feels so, so heartwarming. It really does. It feels so good on the heart. Little heart of mine. Oh, I'm wearing the wrong shirt today. Oops, oops. <laughs> Marilyn Manson, also another very intellectual guy who I fancy his interviews. Just because, to, to me, when I, I, I judge him, okay? I judge Marilyn Manson. I saw this guy with makeup and I saw him on an interview years ago. It's like, this guy, what does he have to say, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is super analytical. Super understanding, super super to it mentally. The guy, the guy's amazing. I, I, um, he said, he said, when you're taught to love everyone, to love your enemies, then what value does that place on love? I hate it when people say love your enemies. It's like, dude, they're your enemies. Like, why should we, why should we reserve love for everyone? That's so stupid. What, what's the point of love then? Love is something that should be, is always should be scarce. Just so 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 scarce. It's such like like gold. You know, I'll give it to very few um, and share it together. And don't, don't give it away. Don't give it away to anyone. If someone hates you, screw them. Like, we don't need to love them back. I hate that. Like, dude, love, love. It's like, dude, why should I love someone that wants to kill me? It's like, dude, no way. That's why I have a gun. It's like, and then, like, and then why should I have that same amount of love to someone that also really loves me? You know, like, screw that. One of my favorite quotes of Marilyn Manson. We live in a society of victimization where people are much more comfortable being victimized than actually standing up for themselves. I think most people find it easier just, just to go with the flow and just, uh, um, in a sense, be becoming victimized than actually saying what's on their mind and, and preventing themselves from doing whatever they don't want to do. Uh, for a lot of people, it's just more convenient to say, you know, sure, um, where, where, it's, where it's, it's, um, it may require a little bit more effort to say no. Um, but it's the most attractive thing is to say no. Um, like when I'm rejected, for, to stand up for yourselves, may, it, may, it may take courage, it may, it may take a lot, a lot of confidence, but confidence is the most attractive human trait by far. And it, it always has been. And um, being yourself, being confident, doing whatever is something I strive for, something I'm trying to find. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, this is deep, guys. This is deep. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I should really stop because it stopped raining and uh, I could go out for hours talking about stuff like this. Um, but one last quote. I used to always finish my sentences before any of my videos, but now I...